Prayer. Prayer is a really interesting thing. <clears throat> and it's a really interesting thing for many, many reasons, because prayer is the way that we commune with our higher self. And our higher self, or God, is meant to be sacred. It's meant to be sacred. But as we're going to see momentarily, will I fix these lights because our production team have uh, left us in the lurch a little bit today. I was doing really well. But as our production team will say, I'm, I'm losing my trailer thought. But as you'll see in this video, folks, um, there's, there's some stuff going on over here in the UK when we're talking about can Britain be saved now that Donald Trump is in office? I hope so, but I'm not entirely certain. Check this out. Uh, what, what are you here for today? Uh, physically, I'm just coming here. It seemed quite Orwellian, to be honest. I was just simply standing a short distance away from a posed abortion centre, saying my prayers um, in my head, and, and that was it. What happened next was quite shocking. So the police approached me and um, asked me what I was doing. Um, I said that I was simply standing there, um, but in my head, I, I might be saying some prayers. So at that point, I'd only said that I might be saying some prayers, um, but, but that was enough for them um, to tell me that I'd broken the PSPO buffer zone and that they were going to arrest me. It's all down to what's called public space protection order. MPs have given their backing to the introduction of censorship zones around abortion clinics in England and Wales. Campaigners for and against abortion will now be forced to stand more than 100 metres away from the clinic. What that particular law states, it's talking about protest and how protest is banned outside the abortion centre. Well, I've never protested outside abortion centres anyway. They've gone there in the past to offer help and, and to pray. Um, but since the onset of the PSPO, I have only gone in and silently prayed. In Okay, so we're going to look at this one from both points of view as we, uh, we we try to do all the time and remain impartial as best I can. So the first thing is uh, the lady, I didn't catch her name, um, so do forgive me for that, but she was saying about prayer, okay, and she had confessed to the police that she was praying silently outside an abortion clinic. And she said, you know, what else am I meant to do, you know, and, and, and all of these things. So the first thing that I would say is, why were you there? Genuinely, why, why were you there? If you know that there is a potential risk, if you know there is a potential uh, threat, and you have been told, look, if you turn up outside this abortion center, uh, there, there is a chance you may be arrested. 
why then would you prod the beast? Now, hear me out here. It's, it's not that I'm anti-prayer. It's not that I'm anti-Christian. It's not that I'm anti-anything. But for someone who's just gone forth and had an abortion, it is not then right, and I think this is where the major concern comes in, for somebody, whoever it may be, male or female, to potentially pose threat, potentially pose harm. Now, you could say, no, no, I wasn't doing that. I wasn't doing that. That's not my intention at all. No, no, no. Police don't know that. Police are being essentially told to do what the government tells them to do. So this is coming from hires up. There have been a number of incidents before where people have gone and had abortions and then gone to leave the hospital and it's been violent, it's been verbally violent, it's been horrific for the person going through it, for the woman going through it. So that's the first thing. It is terrible what's going on. There's, there's no denying that. There's no getting away from that. But the reality is it's happening. It's, and and I've, I've said this you know, for, for years, that protests are never, ever, I don't think, the way forward. Okay, if you're looking for a platform, then YouTube, Facebook, social media um, is probably a safer way of doing it. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm just really old fashioned in that, but I don't think, because what happens when you're out there protesting, especially Christians, is the world looks at you like, well, you're doing exactly what we expect you to do, rather than doing what I'm doing, which is to sit on here and let, hey, let's talk about it. Let's actually explore it from a faith point of view. The other thing is as well, that the, uh, the lady shouldn't be surprised that anything like this is happening, that she's been arrested for her faith. Scripture tells you enough that this stuff is going on, that this stuff is happening, that this way of life will come to you. So she shouldn't be surprised in any way, shape, or form. If you are standing there with your eyes closed, first of all, and you don't need to pray with your eyes closed, you can pray with your eyes open. But you are obviously praying then in my opinion, you are obviously prodding the beast. And if a law has been passed, like it or not, that says you cannot pray within, I think it's 100 meters of uh, abortion centers, that includes inside your house, which is a, a whole dumb thing that I'm going to get onto momentarily, then you have to respect the laws of land. Jesus Christ respected the laws of land. He challenged things. And that's the answer, is you challenge these things in court. You don't deliberately prod a beast that you know could land you in prison because you're deliberately, you're deliberately being defiant. And you say, well, am I, am I, am I defiant to God? Am I defiant? Why is it being defiant to God? To pray with your eyes open and be smart. To say, Lord, I'm, again, let's do a prayer right now. Lord, I don't understand what's happening right now. I pray for the souls of the lives of the babies that have been terminated in there. I pray for the, 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 the unwanted mothers who have made this decision to terminate a life. Oh, policeman, come stop talking. What are you doing? I'm standing out here waiting for someone. What, but again, if you're standing there, Lord, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm silently praying. You're asking for trouble. You're asking for trouble. I firmly believe that God says, go forth, do what you need to do. But for goodness sake, be smart about it. Be smart about it. Um, there is massive concerns about silencing. And as we talked about before with the re-education of Jordan Peterson, if you haven't seen that episode, I'll, I'll, I'll put some links in for you for us. Go and check that out. But the silencing of Jordan Peterson, the re-education of Dr. Jordan Peterson has been a hot topic sort of the last sort of six months. And it is crucially important that we continue to stand up and to speak out and to do what we need to do, but to do it in the right way. In the middle of the commercial break, I was having a conversation with my friend, a uh, dear friend of mine from Theological College, and I informed him, you know, I've already been, you know, sort of told your opinion could land you in jail. If you're starting to arrest people for opinions and thoughts and ideas, where does that end? That's why Starmer's government needs to go. That's why I firmly believe that the next government in should be uh, Nigel Farage. 
Because folks, like it or not, we have got to get back to a place of some stability where values and morals and ethics and the family are actually being put forward, where we're not just allowing every single person into the country, making it harder for, for, for younger people to get houses, to get people to, uh, into jobs, to benefits, to take care of our own. We can't take care of the world, folks, and guess what's happening? All of the rich folk are leaving the UK. Then what are you going to do? You, you really going to sit there if you're working for the NHS and you're struggling for money already? And the, and, and the NHS says, right, okay, well, to support, or oh, sorry, the government says to support the new immigrants that have come in of 2025, the new immigrants, the new class. We're going to take one third of your salary. How would you feel then? Some of you would say, well, it's fine, right? Well, okay, well, what about when it gets to half? What about we'll, we'll take one third of your salary to support immigration? We'll take one third of your salary in taxes because it's the only way, because now we've lost all the big players, money players here in the UK. Then what are you going to do? Are you really going to be for immigration? Or are you going to say, well, hang on a second. Maybe, maybe we need to look at this. Maybe we need to really, really look at what's going on and what's happening. What about your grandmother, your grandfather, that half of their pension is it right that half of their pension then should go to funding immigration and policing it? That known terrorists are coming over into our country. The ISIS members were bust all over the United States several years ago in their hundreds and thousands. When you are being silenced and you're being arrested for your words and you're being arrested for your prayers, it's exactly what the Bible said would happen. Go to Matthew 24. Don't be surprised when this happens. Don't be surprised, Jesus says, when these things are going on, because they have to. As I said last week, Trump being in office buys us a little bit of time. Buys us a little bit of time. Buys us four years. And hopefully it's four years for the leftist culture and the rightist culture to come together and say, you know what? Rather than looking at all the things that divide us, how about we look at what unites us? Can we unite over art? Can we unite over music? Can we unite over theater? Yes, right, brilliant. Okay, can we then start building a world that actually benefits everybody rather than this divisive state, as Abraham Lincoln said, that was going to kill everybody? It will be the death of humanity when political parties reign supreme. What are they doing? People say, oh, you know, the Bible's just not good for anything. Have you ever actually read it? No, of course you haven't. Of course you haven't, because you sit there and, again, develop opinions based upon what you've heard some other clowns say. Hey, someone that's actually read this cover to cover many, many times. As I have done with many spiritual texts and many spiritual books, you can thank Alan Watts for that, one of the greatest spiritual teachers on the face of the planet. Folks, as I said many times before, if we do not get sorted out as a human race and stop looking at what divides us, we will not survive. We will, we will not survive. It's been said by many scientists that we, we've a hundred years left. Max, if we continue going, you know what would have happened in the, if, if Harris had got in? The entire left of our world, the entire Western world would have been leftist. You would have had drag queens reigning supreme. You would have had woke culture reigning supreme, abortion reigning supreme. They're not bothered or interested in values and ethics and morals that benefit everybody. No, they're, bene they're, they're interested in actually what's benefiting themselves. And as we've seen so many times with people that are coming on different shows and saying, if the right, if the left actually listens to what the right is saying, they'll realize that, mm, actually, maybe we're trying to care for you. Maybe we're actually trying to take care of you. Maybe we're trying to speak sense into you, which is why you've got so many people going around college campuses. <sighs> oh, 
we're out of time, folks, but maybe that's a fitting note to end on. I didn't know what I was going to speak on today. There's been many, there's been many weird and wonderful things that have come along this past week. Some that have been really concerning that I really was very, very close to speaking on this week. But I didn't feel it appropriate. But it seems, hopefully, that I've done my job this week. And I hope I have. If I have, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Share this with your friends, because this could be the, the very thing they need to hear in their hour of struggle to try and make sense of the world and all that's going on.